Cool. So welcome everyone to another hashtag Ask Jim. I think we're up to like 100, 180, I forgot. I've just stopped counting. So what we're going to do is we're going to get straight into the questions because we've got a lot here. Now, for anyone who's watching, they might think you've just got a drinking problem with all the beers, but they're all, all our giveaway beers. So we've got the lawn lag, which we've been giving away all week at training. So that's another reason. I haven't come. actually tasted it because I'm not a drinker, but I've been told it's really good. <laughs> Lady yeah. at the front said, excellent it's stuff. Really you might have to do a few taste craft, tests and Craft training. beer. You might right. do a few taste tests tomorrow with people after training just to after see. After training, training finish, but, yeah. But if you do think about coming to training, you can see them. But we've got great prize on offer tonight. As always as well, online, leave some questions. We'll get some as well and maybe give you some prize. But all this is on offer to, for tonight. Jim picks out his favourite three questions. So what we're going to do, I've got all your questions here, but if you want to come up to the microphone, it's open anytime. Just come up and say your name. But the first one I've got here is from Mehmet. Where's, is Mehmet here from the cleaning division? It's about cleaning with two ends. Where's Mehmet? No, I'll read it out real quickly. Let's just keep, keep it underway. Are any of your first franchisees still working and are you still in contact with your first franchisee? No. No. The, 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 uh, we've got franchisees that would be going back to the early 90s, but nobody from 1989. I met one from 27 years ago, Tony Theobald. He's yeah. been there for 27 years. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of my first franchisees called Andrew McIntosh. I was in touch with him recently, but he's now, why he's got all kinds of nurseries and construction businesses and everything, so he's done really well. But he's not, he's not, a, he's not a mowing franchisee. He was a mowing franchisee, one of my first, one of my first trainers, and he was a franchisor. Start off the fencing division and then let, went on to other things. But, but, you, but you still contact, so they might not know, but every Sunday you contact your 25, 20 year type guys and have a chat. Yeah, on the, on the big anniversary, 10, 20, 30 years, I, I, I bring them up. I don't think I've done a 30 year yet. You will be soon with a couple of them, I know, coming right, up. Yep. Cool. Next one here we've got from Johnny from Dogwash. Is Johnny from Dogwash here? Yeah, I'm here. Cool. Jump to the mic, mate. Get your face on our screen and ask your question. Yeah, good day, Jim. Thanks for having me. Hey, yeah, Johnny. Uh, my question is, well, first of all, I'd like to announce when my fiance Cassie and I make our first hundred grand doing Jim's dog wash, we're going to get the Jim's dog wash logo tattooed. <laughs> Will you Please consider do. doing the same? <laughs> <laughs> nah, not going to get tattooed. <laughs> And if it was, I'm sorry to be mowing anyway. That's the division that I grew up in. Yep. This is an ambitious young guy here. He's already talking about a new division. He's, yep. He was pitching me tonight. I, I'm always thinking I years ahead, but that's so the I way said, I work. I said, you know, wait till you come up with something down the track a bit. Thanks, Jim. Good on you. Well, we're going to hold you to that as well. I want to yeah. say it. We'll post 100%. it online and I'll send you some stuff as we, well. We, we, definitely do a, we definitely do a video of that. Yeah. We will. Be... You know, it's funny. We, we get around. We haven't had a Jim's dog wash tattoo yet, but we do get every month. There's some kid gets drunk and gets a Jim's tattoo tattooed on him and they send it to us. And, <laughs> and they want free merch and stuff like that. So we do send them some stuff. But I don't, we don't publicly encourage it, but I sort of do because I like seeing it. the tattoos on people's bodies. All right. Next one here, we've got Igor Bassi from Car Detailing. Is Igor here? Oh, yeah. Yep. Jump up, yeah. Igor, mate. Ask your question. You had, a, you had a few as well, mate. So ask, ask a few of your questions. There's plenty of time. Ask go, all of them. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Hi, Jim. Yeah, there you go. How are you? You're good? So I have to write down many questions, but uh, I think one, one of the, the main ones I would like to know from you is like, a, do you have any ritual, ritual to start your day? Some steps you take every day when you start your day, a, a kind of music you like to, to, to listen or... Or a, a read you like a book you would like to read, uh, something then it, it it brings this kind of motivation for you to keep doing what you do for so long. Okay, well we wake up in the morning if it's possible. I have a bit of a cuddle with my gorgeous wife. That is my first of the day. Um, after that, I get up and go for a run, do some weightlifting, and I run about five k's on the treadmill. So that's my that's my normal day. And then I have a cold shower. All right. That, that's a that's my disciplined time. It makes yeah. a big difference. It does. Discipline yeah. always does. This. does. What do you so I believe in it. What, what, what do you eat for breakfast? Nothing. Oh no. I don't eat before um, before use before one o'clock. Yeah. Oh, so really? I practice sixteen eight fasting, except when I'm working on my farm. In which case, if you're working physically all day, you need breakfast. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> all right. And any food then you dying for? You couldn't travel as far as you could to, to go and get something that this yeah, kind well, of Yeah, like, well, I like Nutella straight from the jar, but that's my yeah. version. <laughs> <laughs> that's my version of crack cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I try not to have too much. Yeah, that's okay. I know. My wife is kind of for this. Like, so. Okay. Do you have a few Thank more you. questions I did you, or was that the only one? Uh, you had a couple more? No, I, another one. Go all right, it, just, one more, just one more. Just one more. Okay, just one more. It is um, true. All these years have been working, uh, and uh, I, 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 I how the 
many years ago, the kind of a payment and way you deal with the customers. Oh, sorry, you're, uh, yeah, you're the customers. I'd like to know if there is any weird, different way someone tried to pay you of your job, like pay with chicken or with uh, <laughs> something like this. I don't know, sometimes back in the day, I don't know if it has done. No, no, no. No, no, no. There was one job I had taking rubbish away and, and I rang up the, the, um, the client to say, why haven't you paid me? And they said, oh, I thought you took the stuff away as payment for it. So I thought that was a bit cheeky. <laughs> I said, no, thank you. I'd like the money. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Good stuff. Thank Cheers, you very much. Man. Thank you. Got a few online as well. Dwayne, who's asked, I think last time with this, was the, how's the beer line going? So the beer line, it's all done. The all, it was done in two runs. They all went out. We had Coopers try and sue us. It was on Channel 10. It was in the Herald Sun. I didn't like the age. circle. Well, apparently they claim they own this thing and they call it a Randall. So um, yeah. we leaked their letter to us to the, the news and the news rammed it. And we had a big competition. We invited them to a taste test, which they didn't take up. No, they didn't take up. <laughs> but that company who did this originally... I reckon, I reckon this stuff would beat Cooper's cold. This is a really genuine craft. Isn't that right? It's a great, great taste craft here. Can't say personally, but I'm told it's fantastic. <laughs> it's a mystery for lager, but they're hopefully doing another run. They want to do another run end of the year. It'll be a bit different can design, though, so Cooper's doesn't get a bit up in arms, but we'll see what happens. Cool. Okay. All right, next one here, I've got from Rosa from Laundry. Is Rosa from Laundry here? No, it's a good question I'll read out. When your career is just starting, you will never really be encounter many difficulties and setbacks and even feel lost, uncertain whether your decisions are correct. During this phase, what methods or approaches did, do you encourage us or did you use to yourself to persevere? I, I never... Um, keeping fit, keeping healthy, being a man of faith, Christian, that helps a lot. I've got to say, having good social support around you, having support of your family, those kinds of things are very important. I've always had a strong sense of purpose because of my research, which is what's talked about in this book. And I, I, I started gyms as a business to fund this. So I guess, in a sense, because I think it's so important, I think something to change the world, I, I can't fail, I can't give up. I could try different avenues, but actually giving up was never an option. I just couldn't imagine it because it would, the purpose of my life would be gone. So that, that did make a difference. I'm a fairly resilient character. I'm pretty tough. My wife says I'm like one of those things with the weights on it, you know, the plastic ones, and you knock them down, it just comes up again. I'm a bit like that. <laughs> and that's a big thing in business too. People fail. Often they fail because they get discouraged and they give up. The ones that are last, which is one reason why actually people who are in steady, good family relationships tend to have a better success rate than single, because young, single, guys especially can get very demoralised. Whereas if you've got a family and you've got a mortgage and you've got kids, you can't give up and they tend to last better. Yeah. Yeah. Good one here. Next one here we've got from Jen from Dogwash. Is Jen from Dogwash here? Yes. Yeah. Hello Jim. Hi, Jim. So uh, I have a two part question. Uh, so it was with your studies at Epigenics, did I say that right? Epigenetics, yeah. How has that changed the way that you live and the second part, what advice would you give your 21-year-old self about epigenetics? Oh. <laughs> um, understanding how... It's, it's, it's a big subject. There's a wonderful book called Dopamine Nation. But basically what happens is if you take a lot of things like... Um, if you take drugs or if you eat a lot of sweet food or you do things, have a lot of sex, especially just you know, bad sex with anybody at all. It tends to, I'm not talking about in your marriage, I'm talking about just, you, you go to pleasure, okay? What that does is, is it balances your brain in a way that um, it imbalances it. It makes it so that it, it upsets the balance of your brain. Your brain trumps to go into balance, so it actually makes you feel worse. So the, the more you try and press on the pressure principle, the more you, you lose the way the brain is balanced and, and the more unhappy you tend to be. Mm -hmm. And so you have to actually have drugs or whatever it is just to feel normal. Now my principle is to do the opposite. What you do is you do things like um, intermittent fasting, you take a restrained attitude towards life, cold showers, be disciplined in your way of life and that has the opposite effect and it creates happiness. So it's understanding the way the world works. Think people think if it feels good, do it. No, if it's, mm -hmm. if it's good for you to do, if it's a good discipline, then do that. And cold, a little bit of fasting, those kind of things, just really good for you. 
And I heard that you're already doing the cold shower, which is that part of... Yeah, I do. Yeah. And I, I expose myself to cold a lot too. I'll, I'll work outside with like a minimal, minimal clothing in the, in the rain and this kind of thing in the middle of winter. Just just yep. a lot of exposure to cold and a bit of discomfort. Not, not extreme, but, but enough. As to the advice to my 21-year-old self, oh my goodness, I tell you what, I've learned so much. I'm just at the age of 71, starting to understand how to run a business properly. I wish there was so much stuff I could have told myself. I would have said lawn mining is a lot better business than you could possibly imagine. This is a real brilliant business to be in. Get into it, do this, franchise as soon as you can. Um, as far as this is concerned too, difficult to say, but I would say uh, if I get him a copy of my book, that would be fantastic. <laughs> but no, that's a, that's a good. That's a good question. Well, thank you very much. Good question. Right. If you want to learn more about this stuff, buy a history. Punch it into YouTube. There's a whole bunch of videos which explain really well. Org. Yeah. Org, but also on YouTube if you punch it in. There's some interviews with yourself actually online yes. on YouTube and things. And there's so. some good videos. Explains how it's done. Absolutely. Real quick question. I want to get online though. Regarding that, someone uh, from Carbet Clean has asked, I read your research in epigenetics wasn't recognised by the universities, which was a driving force for the gyms group. What are your thoughts on universities and the way they teach? Is the question online, which is a good one to get that in. Was, mine. Yeah. was that yours? Yeah. Good one. Oh, is, yeah. yeah, sorry, you should have. Sorry, it was online here. I've got it in the comment section. Did you leave it on the paper, the paper here? No, stage fright. <laughs> oh, stage fright. All right, no, no worries. All good. No, it's, look, it's a, it's a good question, actually. Um, it's basically, the universities are a hotbed of, of orthodox left-wing thinking. They're, they're very rigid and narrow. You can't say anything, and it's a little bit different from the... From, it's, it's actually a bit like the, the, the age of the Inquisition, but, it, but it's just... You, you've got to be exactly in that field. There's virtually no people who are conservatives in most universities outside of just a very few departments like economics and so forth. Very, very bigoted. And, and not good environments. I'm not a great believer in, in, in tertiary education, even though I've got a PhD myself. Um, I, I think that actual fact, you look at someone like Dan, you know, he's been out working at um, McDonald's. I think that's a great, great training for life. I think, I think we overestimate the value of tertiary education, quite frankly. Unless you want to become a dentist or someone like that, well, that's good. Yeah. No choice. I, mean, I, just, I was doing medicine, and I, yeah, that's how I took it as well. It was um, very left wing, and we couldn't ask questions. No. If we asked a question, we were sort of in outcast. If you questioned like the way they taught, you're um, yeah, um, you, you couldn't I, have I, an opinion. I'm with you on that one. That's uh, <laughs> it's a very questionable thing, and I think we've got far too much emphasis. There's a wonderful book called The Case Against Education which I really recommend to you, talking about why they think education really doesn't teach you anything much at all after your basic literacy, but people do it because it gives them an advantage in the marketplace in terms of going for job interviews. And it just shows that you've got the ability and the work perseverance to get through a degree. But what you actually learn for the most part is almost completely irrelevant. Yeah. That's yeah. good stuff. But guys, if you want to just come up to the mic as well, you don't have to wait. Please come up and just ask anything as well. We encourage that. Next one I've got here is from Kamari from Cleaning. Is he still here? Kamari? Kamari from Cleaning. He's asked, will you do a Jim's whiskey? Are you going to launch a whiskey, Jim? We actually, we're talking about Jim's wine. We're going to do a Jim's, Jim's wine. We gonna do some brand, we're going to do some brand wines. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, everybody's a beer drinker. Yeah. Some people like wine. We've got to think of some great giveaways too. What about a non-alcoholic beer, Jim? Yeah, for us, the people who don't drink like you and me. <laughs> I actually asked about that. I asked about uh, soft drinks and stuff, other alternatives. So very hard to get done, though. You can get wine and you can get beer, but hard Easiest to get... thing for us to be bottled waters, to be honest, but it's hard to get... <laughs> it's hard to get it because when you do these things, you need run levels. So you need... That. The reason why we could do this is because the company sold this in the commercial market because they had a thing and they sold out and we had leftovers that we could buy. To do a non alcohol run with gyms, I don't think many brewers would be game enough to tackle it just because of what they have to produce and stuff. Yep. But a custom thing like a bottled waters or something like that, we can definitely, definitely do for people yeah. who don't drink. Yeah, we should. We should. <laughs> we'll wait for it. About, about whiskey, that's the hard stuff. That's, uh, but, but wine would be okay. So, wants to do a whiskey batch, you know, as a brewer, by all means, use our, talk to us about the IP and we can arrange something. So, Jim's whiskey, interesting one. Yeah. Idea. Yeah. I only had, I've only had, drank an alcohol twice in the past half century. One, when I went to a, a wedding where, where they had a communion in the Anglican church, so I had a little glass of wine there. And the other, I went to my daughter's wedding, and I was looking for a soft drink instead of trying to get away from the champagne. And I got this stuff from the fridge. It looked like soft drink, so I had a... <laughs> <laughs> that was my second drink. It tasted disgusting. 
<laughs> Guys, if you want to come up and ask a question, please feel free to do so as well. Next one here is from Tice from Handyman. Is he here, Tice? I said your name right? No, not here. How about a Jim's EV Charger installation division? So Jim's EV Charging as a division. Yeah, we've got it actually. It's a service code under um, Energy, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they did it. In fact, all the, if you look at, across at the, uh, their headquarters there, there's some charges which we do free because, because we've got solar panels, so the staff have, can charge for free off the solar panels during the day. So that was all put in by Jim's EV. We've also got it at home too, which runs my electric uh, Volvo. Yeah, so good. it's a good, good idea, but we've, we've got it already. <laughs> sure. They're very good actually too. They do a great job. Next one here we got from Logan. Is Logan from Mowing still here? No. What is, your, what is Jim's opinion on some fake stickers that people have made? So there's a fake sticker sometimes like Jim's bush bashing or Jim's various stickers that get around oh, it's sometimes. Good. It's yeah. good. We've got Jim's Brazilians. We've got Jim's all kinds of things. <laughs> we don't sell those, but there we go around. There was a van driving around with Jim's Brazilian. People keep on saying to me, don't you? I don't, I don't even care. Nobody takes it seriously. It, 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 it promotes the brand. Yeah, we had the wick Has anyone seen those wicked vans where they do them in different designs and stuff? Yeah, yeah there was the Jim's Brazilians vans getting around for a long time. And yeah. you'd always have concerned members of the public going and, you know, what are you going to do about this? And you'd be like, oh, I'm okay with it. <laughs> so it's fine. There's a few of them getting around. The only thing we don't want people to do is pretend they're us when they go and give us service. That we get very stroppy about. We had a, uh, during the drought some years back, we had somebody go around with Jim's water tanks and they were coming back to about all the shoddy service they were getting. But it wasn't us. And it wasn't our logo. It was just the name Jim's. We run, we run meme comps and stuff and you know, people make stickers and logos yeah. and we've got a logo generator on our website actually so you make your own Jim's logo on the Jim's website and yeah. post and all that sort of stuff. We've had hundreds of these actually, yeah. We have had a lot. What was your favourite one of the, all the memes over the years and all the stickers? Jim's Hitmen. Jim's Hitmen, <laughs> alright. Some people they, might need that one. They, did a, they, they actually had it for a, for a national conference. They had a white sort of windshield with a little black gun on it. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question here I've got is, uh, is, it, is Rhea from Cleaning here? Rhea? Yeah. R-I-Y-A? <laughs> Hello, I have a question. I think so it's already been asked, like, do you have your first franchisee still with you? No. But I do have two more questions for you. Go ahead. I know you're really going for the monopoly. No, answer. no, it's not. It's just like out of curiosity. You can ask any of them. Since yesterday, I have seen on Google that you have 11 kids. Which one is your favourite one? Who's the golden child? <laughs> You can't ask me a question no, like that. No, I can. <laughs> They're all equal favourites. No, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us. You can tell us secretly in our years who's the no, favourite like, one. <laughs> I can tell a secret. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I also read online, I also read online yesterday that someone just posted an Australian businessman accidentally became a millionaire. What would you like to say about that? Like, if I'm a millionaire, I won't like people coming up and telling me, like, I've become a millionaire accidentally. Somebody who posted has no idea how business actually works. Yeah. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> because but that's, that's, people look at it and they say, oh, you're just lucky in the same place. Being successful is, is the same for everybody. It's a thousand little experiments every day saying, how can I do it better? That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the, the question. There's no accident about it. Look, yeah. there's good fortune, okay? Lawn mowing was a, turned out to be good, but it could have been cleaning, it could have been dog wash, it could have been anything. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. If you do anything and you just say, how can I do it better, you will be successful. Thank Good you. Good questions. Guys, if you want to come up and ask a question, please feel free as well. Don't wait for me to read them out. Uh, next one here is from Spencer. Is he from here, Car Detailing? Spencer? No, real quickly, Jim, who mows your lawns? It's a common one. <laughs> um, Tony does it. Tony, which is our garden on site mate. Our gardener, he just, he's got a lawn mower, he just, he just runs over our place every now and then. Because he does, he does the grounds here. But saying that over the years, you've had different franchisees from different divisions come and do different things. For yeah, I had, I had some Jim's mowing guy come and do some planning for me. Unfortunately, the stuff all died, so that wasn't good very successful. Not good. I am looking for a Jim's landscaper to actually do some planting for us next door. Somebody who knows how to plant things. But you've had people do your, you know, your cars, your dog, you've had people do antennas and stuff. Oh, like we that. do everything. Yeah. So we've got a great guy, Matt Cathy, who does all of our uh, digital work, you know, TVs, connections, everything. He's fantastic. He's Jim's antennas kill site. Great operator. We, yeah, we get um, dog. We have our dog done. It's a bit of a challenge. He's notorious the worst dog in dog. <laughs> bites everybody. We had one lady doing it. She had bitten like that. So it, it, Pollard was well known. 
Yeah, we've had mowing, we've had cleaning, we've had window cleaning, we've had just, just about everything over the years. You yeah. have. And guys, if you've got any questions, please feel free and come up and ask as well. Don't wait for me to read them out. Next one here is Jaden Cross from Mowing. Is Jaden here from Mowing? Jaden up the back. Cool. Good question. I like this one. It's a very, it's a very appropriate question, Jim, with some of the stuff we might have planned. Yes, I mate, it's a bit of a different one, but um, you're a very successful person, very intelligent. You've done well with obviously everything you've done here in your career. Have you ever thought about running as Prime Minister? Jim <laughs> for PM. We always get that. It's a good one. Yeah, if I was 20 years younger, I might think about politics. But really, I've got so much to do with my business and my research project. It's tempting at times. Yeah, it Standing is. Standing for the isn't Senate it? or. Trying to, something about state parliament. I mean, state politics, is, it's awful. Mm. One of the biggest problems in this country is, is inequality driven by ridiculous housing prices. And there's some very simple things that could change that so much, like loosening some of the absurd housing restrictions and allowing more medium and high density housing, especially in the stations. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, and let people, it's, I think it's shameful that young people can't afford to buy a house. And those who can afford to take out massive, massive, massive mortgages. I bought my first house in the 70s, basically out of my lawn mowing income. It cost me $30,000. I mean, you couldn't do that these days. And I think that's really bad. And there's a lot of changes that to be made. I think we should have a land tax, drop down on the, on the income taxes and have a land tax instead, which actually bears on people who've got more expensive properties. There's a lot of things that could be done. And, and it's, there's, there's a wonderful book I just finished reading about, about all these kind of processes. It's in Minneapolis in, in the US, which has um, adopted systems to make housing affordable. And if you actually look at it, the, the median price of that house has come down dramatically. And you don't have problems with homelessness, which is a big issue with expensive housing Absolutely. and inequality. I, th I think I'd love to get involved, actually. Mm. I've even started writing a book at various stages about some of this stuff. But... Myself going into politics, I don't. He's too honest. You'll get asked a question and give a straight answer and they'll be gone. Yeah, I, wouldn't be a, I would not be a good politician. <laughs> you get votes though, mate. I would not be a good politician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, awesome. Okay. Great question. Thanks, Thanks for your time, for Jim. Really good one. Real quick question online as well, Jim, from Jared Bywater. says, hey, Jim, thank you for your help with Jim's legal. It really helped him out. So, Jared... You might want to talk about that because that's a really... Yeah, Jarrett's the guy that yeah. I was telling somebody about at, at um, dinner time. He's the guy who went to, to Fox because he can get on with his franchise or And after a few months, he came back because he said it's terrible. Income drop, terrible leads. I... Anyway, so that was good. And we took a big video of it. So it was really good from our point of view. And we gave him free legal, legal help against... Um... Well, Jim's legal was the thing that helped him out with the... Um... Yeah. yeah. Which was pretty good, so... Well, we didn't, we didn't charge him for a trade to trade, but they, they wanted to. So we, we helped him with that. There you go. Cool, next one here from Sarah from Dogwash. Is Sarah here from Dogwash still? Cool. Hi, Jim. My question is, and you just spoke about your dog, um, is how did the Dogwash division really get started and did it have anything to do with the personal experience that you'd had? Dogwash started a very, very long time ago. It was one of the first divisions. It didn't do very well for a long time. It was just an idea. I mean, we had originally metal trailers, but there were problems. They rusted out a lot. Um, and uh, it really was almost dying. We had, we had a, a divisional franchisor who was the loveliest guy in the world who didn't, didn't make it work properly. He, just, he was just too nice. He had one franchise, he owned $30,000 in fees. $30,000. So he was hopeless. And it dropped to about 30 franchisees. And then we brought it back, built it up a bit, and we put Sharon Connell in charge, and it's gone gangbusters. It's now one of the fastest growing divisions in Grimscrew. It's got 240, so leadership is the thing. But it wasn't particularly, it was just, just looked like a good opportunity. Dogwash, it's great. Dogwash is, people get filled up. We've got 240, we could have 2,000 franchisees and we couldn't cope with the work. The demand is so high. It's a, it's a brilliant division. It's not my favourite though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dog, every train they ask me, what's your favourite division did with the bread top? I said, nah. <laughs> my heart, I bleed green. <laughs> but I love all my divisions. Thank you. Good question. Thank you very much. Do I come up, guys? Just jump up as well and ask a question. Got one here from Mandy from Laundry. Is Mandy from Laundry still here? Yep. Mandy. It's a nice question, this one. Mm -hmm. um, hi, Jim. Oh, yes. Hi, Mandy. Yeah, um, my question is um, how to balance your life and uh, works because um, I'm, I'm designed to join... Um, 
join uh, gyms him, but in the meantime, I'm still running two business. So I just really want to know how do you balance this? Two things. Well, Mandy, there's a wonderful saying that goes, no other success can compensate for the failure in the home. I don't care how successful you want to be, it doesn't justify neglecting your family. I take my son to school and I pick him up every day except Wednesday I can't because I'm in training at that time. And, and I've always got time for my kids. I just would never ever compromise on that. Other things you can do without, but not time with your family. So I think you just go, but one of the great things about a franchise, and I hear this again and again, is that actually, it's actually a, a kind of arrangement where you can spend time with your family and still make a decent living. On, on, I rang one of my 10 year franchisees on, on um, last night, just to congratulate them on 10 years of talking about this. And that's the thing he said, there's actually a dog wash person, and they said it's so great because I can, this is a woman, he can fit in with my school, I can take my kid to school, I can pick him up. She actually has her dog wash van at home, people bring their dogs to her there. So she's, a, she's basically a single mother, but she can look after her kids in a way, and she can make a good income. To me, that's one of the greatest things there is. And I, look, we celebrate people who make a lot of money. You know, it's fantastic to see that, but in actual fact, most mm -hmm. of the people who are really delighted with gyms are people who make a decent living, at least, at least as good as what they did in the past, but they're seeing their family. And I don't think you should ever compromise on that. It's a good, good question. Okay. Thank you very much. Cool. If you've got a question, guys, feel free to jump up anytime and interrupt. Um, next one here I've got from Mark. Is Mark from Mowing here? Mark yep. Mancini? Perfect. Hi, Jim. How are you going? Hey, Mark. Mine's um, very left and feel, a bit random, but I uh, started reading your book, and I understand you're a bit of a sci-fi and Star Wars nut. Um, so, given that Jim's name is extremely successful, if you had your chance to base the name of your business, the group, on a Star Wars character, who would it be? Very creative. Never had that one ever. That is a good one. That yeah. is a good one. If I could name the group on it rather than myself. Look, I have my heroes. That, you know, I, one of my favourite is Elbert Palpatine. I think he's the man who brings peace and order to the, to the galaxy. This is, this is a true hero. And his uh, very wonderful sidekick, Darth Vader. I think, I think those are two of my favourite characters. Darth Vader up in the... Uh... Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I'm a big fan of villains. I like the bad guys. Got to be able to use the force. Use the force. That's <laughs> use the force. The yeah. dark side of the force. The dark <laughs> side. I think, that, I think the Jedi are a bit pussyfoot. I mean, in fact... To... I mean, come on. You can't even have a family and you can't even have kids. What sort of a life is that? What about, what about prosper and perish? You know, pros prosper or, you know... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't agree with that. I, I think I like, I like Palpatine. The only thing about Palpatine is I think that George Lucas got that all wrong. What emperor, what person smart enough to become a galactic emperor would tell his main supporter to kill his only son? I mean, how stupid would you be? So I think this is blackening Palpatine's name unfairly. He would never do such a thing. Excellent. Great answer. Thank you very Great much. Question. And you, yeah. <laughs> Great original question. Appreciate that one. No cool. Well, there's Olivia from Carpets here. Olivia? Yep. Here we go. Are you strapped in? Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, I actually don't go really ahead. Remember. I've got a couple here. Okay. I'll have a look at the text message. Yeah. I know I had some particularly weird ones. Um, do you live in a castle? <laughs> <laughs> I live in a very ordinary sort of house, which is just next door here. Yeah. Funny thing, I was in the supermarket the other day, and this guy said, what are you doing shopping? You, you've been doing your own shopping. <laughs> you sort of think I'm living a luxury lifestyle. Very ordinary. I take out the garbage, clean the kitchen, make the bed. Ordinary life. Nice house, but nothing special. Did you ever find any treasure while you were gardening and mowing? Yes. Yeah? Massive treasure. Yeah? Millions of dollars worth of treasure based on service. You <laughs> dig up treasure, that's what you do. You wash treasure off dogs. Any artifacts? Great life. Yeah? Great life, yeah. There is, there is real treasure. It's, it's like the, uh, the, the guy who said there's treasure in his garden, so he dug it and dug it and dug it to find the treasure. He didn't, but he actually grew a magnificent garden. There's, there's, treasure, in, there's, there's treasure in ordinary life. The, the best, the best sources of treasure are the things you do every day but do them well and that's more interesting to me than going out and hunting if i was actually going back to something like the gold rush i would never go and dig gold 
I would supply goods to the miners. Let's have a business. That's, that's the way I would think about things. Do the ordinary, basic... People just think there's boring things. I don't find them boring at all. I just do them really, really well. And that's where the treasure is. like that. Um, this has kind of already been answered, but if you had to rebrand, what name would you choose? Or, how, or what... and logo? Why would I go... <laughs> why would I rebrand? <laughs> you never know. You well, might get sued name, by a bigger My gym. legal name is David, so I suppose you'd call me Dave's Mowing or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> when they were actually looking at business names back in, in, in pre-franchise days, we were trying to register a name and so forth, and Jim's didn't seem to come up or something, so I, we were looking at DJ's Mowing or something like that. DJ's Mowing. <laughs> well, well, DJ is my, my initial, yeah, yeah, David James is my yeah. legal name. So, but, yeah, Jim's is good. It's, it's, got, a, it's got a sort of a very... Um, Sort of a macho sound to it, don't you, don't you reckon? It's got yeah. <laughs> That's one of the reasons we didn't think it applied to anything but, but like cleaning, because we wouldn't think a woman would want to wear something with a guy with a beard and a hat, which is very much of a mowing type image. But it, it, it extends, it's amazing. Hmm. Um, and my last question for you is what makes Jim happy? Sense of purpose. Sense of living, living my life for a good reason, which is my franchisees my success of my franchisees and my research. This thing here. Not your beer. <laughs> Not a beer. No. It, could, it could make you happy if you tried it. Look, I, I think happiness. I'm, very, I'm a very keen student of happiness. Anybody who watches my videos will say I talk a lot about that and I read a lot about it. But things like living a disciplined lifestyle, doing the things you ought to do rather than things you immediately feel like doing, like getting exercise, like controlling your diet, like, like leading a meaningful life good social relations and so forth. To me, the community of faith, very important, my church. And, and we, my church group met, met here last night, some of you might have seen us. So mm. there's, there's the recipe for happiness, family, yeah. friends, discipline, those kinds of things, sense of purpose. And, and, and it, it, there's a science to it, and it's totally different. And one thing that does not make you happy is chasing money, especially money for the sake of appearing better than somebody else, like buy an expensive car, the big house, expensive clothes, the posh holidays, all this kind of stuff. People think that makes you happy. It does not, and there's all the science behind it. But a, a flexibility, having a flexible lifestyle, that you can do the things you want to do at the time you want to, that's happiness. Not committing too much, not being in too much debt. But there's a science to happiness, and it's not the chasing after wealth that people think. It's a good, balanced, meaningful life. And it's open to myself and it's open to any, anybody. Particularly, I might say, my franchisees, because flexibility is one of the great things about a job. How do new ideas come to you? How? Yeah. In a cold shower? <laughs> um, I do a lot of gardening, actually. I often think of new ideas. I read uh, all the time. I listen to talking books. I probably read or listen to a couple of books a week. Always listen. I'm reading a wonderful now about um, human evolution. Mm. Evolution changes in human beings and what's happened and what drives it, mismatch, disease and all kinds of things like that. I love to read, I love to listen, I read economists, I read new scientists. I just, I just constantly, and I talk to people a lot. Every day I'm talking to my franchisees and I'm hearing what's going on. I'm talking in the office, I go, I walk around the office talking to people. I have lunch, and like a meals with, with my, my um, trainees talking. Ideas, what, what things come up, it's always, always exposing myself to new ideas. My mind is very, very changeable, you might say. I change my opinion on things a lot. I think it's very important to expose yourself. My ideas are quite different to what they were even five years ago. I change my mind about a lot of different things. Would you change your mind about beer? Yeah, we did change my mind about beer. <laughs> beer? <laughs> Start drinking it? Absolutely. <laughs> Doing one was the, probably the big win. Come up and ask the question, John. Go for it. Hi, Jim. Um, got a room full of people that are about to become small business owners. If they were to go in front of their local member, state or federal, what should they be lobbying for as a new small business owner? That's an interesting question. It's a good question. Never had it. Mostly. Businesses don't affect, the business regulations don't affect us too much, as a matter of fact, really, apart from the horrors that we went through during the lockdown, um, for no reason at all. I, th I think, 
It'd be good if people, rec people could recognize that we are a major part of the economy. It annoys me. The service industry is massive, what we do, and yet we're not recognized as even being a standard part of the economy. If you actually put down yourself as, an imp as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, what your work is, it doesn't even come up. So I think we're actually a lot more important than people give us credit for. Um, but generally speaking, the, the law doesn't get in their way, honestly. I, I think if I'm lobbying anybody at politics, I lobby them about things like housing costs. I think it's appalling. That, that I, I'm very concerned about the, drop, the, the increasing level of inequality. I don't think it's driven by, by, by government policy. I'd be lobbying them about a fair deal for people who want to buy houses. You know, my kids are okay. I help them myself. I'm in that position where I can. But most people, most people don't have that, that possibility, and it's just not fair. It's not right. And we set this thing up deliberately, all these restrictive covenants. I actually often sit next to politicians. We used to run fundraisers here. And, and uh, I, I, never, I never lobbied them about the business. It was always about stuff like housing and things like that. Yeah. Right. Good question. Thank you. Good, good question. one. That's a good original one. Yes, yeah, a good question. Mark it down. Cool. Got one here from Brian Madden from Building Inspections. Is he here still? Brian Madden? No. I like this question because he, he always gets asked. He's asked, when did Jim shave his beard? So when did you shave your beard? That was in the year 2020. I think. 2020? No, sorry, 2001. I was going to say, because we had a... No, 2001, that's right, because my, 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 I met my, my wife... Because that was from 1999, so I don't know how well can see, but people can see that, <laughs> but that was 1999. You actually... <laughs> you actually see it in there. The reason I raised my... You can have a look at that, you see the beard's going a bit grey. <laughs> that's why I shaved it up, because I was single at the time, which was, I mean, after this was taken, and it was going grey, and I said, didn't look too... Didn't need to look any older than I am. If I, if I grew it now, I'd look like Santa Claus. So <laughs> I think it was 2001, because I met Lee... Um, was it 2000? I think it was, I think it was just, just before... Must the, just after, yeah. November, uh, before 9-11. Before, um, ah, OK, right, right. There we go. We, got, we have a beard here, though, so I'm just going to... Just try it on just for the bucket, how often <laughs> you feel are. Now, what I want to do as well is I actually want to hand this around to people here as well, because this is a current question for our social media. So this is Jim's original fly that he used to hand around to people. This is like his rookie card, so... Make sure we get that one back if you don't have any more of those. Very valuable. There we are. There we go. Take a photo with Jim if you want. Now you do one question. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah. Yeah, right. It's a bit uncomfortable, actually. It is. It's very Prick, itchy, that one. Prickles a bit. We've, we've had it on a bit for all the arse gyms. We did this for gym land. We did. That beer's had good value for money, that one as well. Yeah. Cool. All right, if you got any questions, guys, feel free to come up and ask as well. Next one here we've got from Regenda Singh. Is Regenda here? Now, if you've got a question as well at the front or anything, please come up and ask Jim. So, Regenda has basically asked, how did you manage to get this franchise to work across four countries? So, if people don't know we're in four countries. Well, I didn't actually because we've bailed in the UK. We've got about 12 franchisees there who are basically self-running. We couldn't make it work. Um, and really outside Australia and New Zealand, it's very difficult actually. Canada as well. No. We're in Canada. We've got about 80, 90 in Canada, but only in British Columbia. So, it's never taken off there. It's really quite difficult. In fact, it's, it's a lot easier to start a new division in Australia or New Zealand than it is to start gyms in another country because our brand is so well known here. Mm. So immediately we launch any kind of business in Australia or New Zealand, we're already extremely well known. It's very hard. It's very hard to develop the culture. It's very hard when you don't bring people in for training because you, you know what you've experienced this week is a very strong sense of Jim's culture, isn't there? Mm -hmm. we, we talk about it as bleeding green in the old days when it was mainly mowing, but there's a certain way we think about things. It's very hard to get people to adopt that in different countries when they don't actually get exposed to the way we think, which is very different to anybody else. Mm -hmm. So quite hard. It's obvious in a way we'd love to go into the American market, but it's just very difficult. Mm -hmm. Difficult to spread the culture. Next one we've got here is from Craig uh, from Jim's Car Detailing. Is Craig from Jim's yeah. Car Detailing in? Perfect, up the front. No worries. Thanks, Joel. Jim, um, we've all had a bit of a walk around the facility here and amazed on, um, you know, the, the kitchen and the food and the way that we um, get looked after. We were just wondering, Fiona and I um, have got bee colonies down at our place at Newborough between Moey and Morwell there. And um, maybe, you know, like we could sort of push on with the wine thing and make some mead um, if we had some bee colonies here on site. Uh, well, the point about bee colonies, you've got to have, you've got to have, be able to feed them. And I think you'd find it hard to get enough um, pollination, pollinations here. See, we have them on my farm. 
um, we've got a few bee colonies up there, and it's quite, it's quite a challenge, actually, because you've got to have different flowering plants at different times of the year. Yeah. And Mark, the guy who runs it for me, actually sometimes he gives them, feeds them sugar in the off-season, otherwise they'll die. Yeah. So I think in, if you look around here, there just wouldn't be enough, wouldn't be enough flowers to, yeah. to make it viable. It's, no. a great, it's a great thing, actually, but, yeah. but you need, you need the, the space, you need to really manage it. Yeah. And, and probably on behalf of everybody, um, you, know, uh, you know, you spoke about um, Jim's Brazilian there a little bit earlier. Um, Wasn't and, my idea. No, no, I, I, I know. And then um, I, I uh, almost fell backwards off my chair when you started talking about good sex and bad sex. So maybe we can take that offline and talk about that another night. <laughs> I'm a great believer in having a very happy sex life. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Jim. Good man, Craig. Good man. We always like a bit blue on here. It's good sometimes. Those sort of things, it's good. I've got all your questions here as well, but guys, please feel free to come up and ask because I might not get to them all. So if you've got a burning question for Jim, just interrupt us. It doesn't have to be on here. Just come up and ask. We prefer to do that as well. Um, next one here I've got from Brett Blair, which we always get asked, but we'll ask this for him from Pool Care. I don't think he's here. Do you have a succession plan? Is the one we get from Brett. Yep. My, we have a family uh, trust structure. My kids and their married partners are in charge. Um, I'm looking to put a clause in the contract. One thing I do not want to have is Jim's um, sold to some greedy multinational, which would rip things off the way the retail food group did so many great brands. What we intend to do is to put a clause in contracts, franchising and franchisor, which means that the gyms cannot be sold without the written consent of a majority of franchisees. I'm very concerned. I probably live, I'm very healthy, probably live at least another 20 years, um, which is beyond the life of most people who are signing today. But when I'm gone, I want to make clear, I've got some wonderful, um, I've got a potential son-in-law who, who's got great prospects for running the business, a couple, couple of my children maybe too. So I think I've got some great succession. But basically, gyms will become owned by a family trust, which is basically... Partly will, will fund some of my children buying housing and so forth, but also mainly will be funding this research project. But that, that's the aim. Good but question. It's, it's all written up in a family trust document. Sure. Guys, if you've got a question, please feel free to come up and ask as well. Um, we've got a few here, but I don't know if we're going to get to them all. But I just want to touch on a couple real quickly that have come online mm -hmm. to keep them as well. So real quickly, Stephen's gone, are you going to continue putting on mowing, lawn mowing contractors despite the forecast for dry conditions? So obviously there's a big um, weather event, we're going in another cycle. Might be a bit drier in some areas than others, so. Yeah, well, what we're actually doing, we are having issues like that in Queensland now because the, because the rains yeah. haven't come. What we're actually doing, though, is, is we, we're hitting really, really hard with advertising. We're doubling and trebling advertising budget. And, and Joel's, we've got, a, we've got a market department that actually pushes hard. So what we, what we do is we have a lot of areas where we've got surplus work, so we're actually taking the money off that area and putting it, really pouring it into areas where we need more work. And if we do that, we can find more. Now, when we do get a situation where there's really shortage of work, we just don't put new franchisees on, obviously, for the time being. But our main solution is simply to put it in to find work. One of the things people mistake they make is they think that the more franchisees you have, the less work per franchisee. It actually is the other way around. The more franchises you have locally, the more work you have, because you've got more trailers, more vans, you've got more advertising going out and it's just the, the toughest is being a pioneer seriously the ones who go in the newest pioneer area they struggle but by the time you've got 10 of them they're, they're flourishing mm. so fundamentally we'll pause it a little bit there are certain areas we won't put anybody on right now but our main response is just to pour in the advertising into the areas we need it good question online next one here i've got is from yassi from it is he still here yassi yeah yep that's a good question Hey, Jim. Hi, Jesse. Yeah. Um, how, um, how would you describe a best franchisee? Like, many people have multiple opinions, but how would you describe it? The best franchisee is somebody who looks at what they do every day and say, how can I do it better? And there's no such thing as being good enough, because you can always improve. I've been running this business for decades, and I'm still, every day, working out better ways to do it. So the best franchisee is not one who says, who says, I'm never good enough, what can I do to improve? And we've got so many great people. And one of the wonderful things about it too is you get different ideas. You get one franchisee who's fantastically good at, say, 
getting a great hourly rate. Somebody else is good at this particular job that they've designed. Other people are good at, at, at equipment. They've, everybody's got their strengths. And if you learn from each other, you can all improve. It's the great power of the group. But there's no, to, to me to actually say who's the best franchisee in Jim's group would be impossible. I could say who's making the most money and they'd be in the multiple millions per annum. But then also a best franchisee to my mind might be somebody who's making more modest salary, maybe four or five thousand a week, but is helping others and, and mentoring them, for example, and showing you guys how to make money and, and that sort of thing. To me, that's, that's just as much the best as anything. Cool. Good Thank question. You. Thank you very much. Yes. Gonna come up, guys. Feel free to jump up and ask as well. Got a few more comments online, real quickly. Richie's gone. Uh, well said. Um, I have two baby boys and can't fail with my business franchise. And thanks to my gyms and tennis franchise, I have an avenue to give them a better future. He says thank you for making it possible, which is fantastic. He's got it quickly as well. Do you believe in taking risk in business or overextending yourself financially to expand? The yeah, only advice. Question? My father was an engineer, not a businessman. But the only advice he gave to me that I really listened to is never bet the farm. You never take a risk that puts your business at risk. And I know people like Robert Maxwell, for example, and those kinds of big tycoons will make these huge bets. That sort of thing never appealed to me. We make good money at gyms, and we do it in a way that's very secure. We never borrow. We actually have very little debt in comparison to the size of the company. We've got less debt than our, than our annual profit would be, for example. So, no, I don't believe in taking risks. I think, I think you, you, you know what you want and, and, and you know, what, what's the meaning of, of doubling or trebling your income anyway, unless you've got something useful to do with it. I make enough money to fund this, look after my family, look after my kids. I don't need, I don't need massively more. I don't care if I never become a billionaire, I, just not my aim. I just want to run a good business that does good things. Got a few more online, but guys, if you want to come up and ask as well, um, please feel free to do so. Anyone who asks a question on the mic gets a prize at the end. So. Bit of an incentive there. Chat online's gone higher, Jim's group. Do you have any open training days happening in Perth anytime soon? My family member would like to learn more about your op options. So do we do the training in Perth? No, we don't train in Perth, but come across to Melbourne. We, our, our training course is very open, actually. If you're just interested in learning how to do it, you come across, you can do it. It's a three-day generic course. We don't insist that you buy a franchise. In fact, we'd rather you didn't sign before you join and um, come and learn it. It doesn't cost very much. It's what about, what's the, what's the generic cost? Less than a... Around about a grand or a bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, and then, and then some accommodation, which is on site. Yeah. So, you know, you've got less than $2,000. You've got one of the best business training courses in the country, and so open to anybody. We've had people come and do franchisee training and franchise or training and go out and start their own competitive franchise networks. That's a multiple times. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, I remember one lady who rang me, she's been to franchise or training, she said, congratulate me, I've just signed my first franchise, and I said, I didn't think you joined us, she said, no, I didn't, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mind, I don't mind, because it's good. Has it's... VIP come back through yet? <laughs> <laughs> I actually did say to Bill this once, I said, Bill, why don't, you, why don't you learn what we do and do the same kinds of things? He, he said, my people wouldn't let me, I don't quite know what that meant, but, but people can learn from us, I don't mind, we, we've got no, we've got no secrets. If you read my book, you'll see everything in that. We tell everybody about what we do. And it, it's, it's fine, because actual fact, what happens is the people who, who look at these things, they look at it and say, wow, you guys are good, and they decide to join us. That's what mostly happens. Come up, mate. Ask a question. Hi, hi Jim. My name's Trung. I just got a um, question in terms of, like, um, you know, like a division. How do you determine it and do you do any research before you, you make the decision to go ahead or not? Yes, absolutely. What will happen is somebody will come to me with an idea for a new division and it comes to me. And I probably get one of these at least once a week. Um, come to me with an idea. I say, first of all, what do you know about the business? How long have you been running it for? Um, you know, and just ask questions. Are you successful, profitable yourself? So I, I get an understanding of what they know about, how successful they are. Then the other thing I would do is look at the, um, I'd look at the, the industry in general. Now, just to give you an example, um, earlier this week I had somebody come to me with the idea of doing a business based on rising damp. He's a bricklayer, he's got a system for coping with rising damp, and he says it's a good business. Now, I had a look on Google when I was talking to him, and the first thing I noticed that when you Google rising damp, there are no sponsored ads. So what I said to him immediately is there's not enough business to do a, a gym's franchise because we don't make a lot of money per franchisee. 
the actual profit per franchise is only you know, two or three hundred dollars a week, a month. It's not, it's not a lot. So we, we can't do it unless there's scale. Mm. So what I said to him is we wouldn't do rising damp, not a big enough industry, but we'd love to do Jim's bricklaying and rising damp within that. And then you look at things like, can you make at least 60 bucks per hour? If you can't make 60 bucks an hour, average operator, we're not interested because that's not, that's not, not worth doing for less money than that. So, and then we look at the person themselves. What are they like? We put them into training. We put them through franchise or training, which is quite rigorous. And then we, we test them on the spot. So there's a process that goes through like that. Right. Okay. But we're starting new divisions about one every couple Probably of months. Month, yeah, one or two, every month almost. Well, Concrete pumping was in last training, which was a new one. Haven't started few, yet. Haven't started yet, but there's a few coming. We through. actually probably start one, and there's a new system we've got called a divisional rental. So nobody nobody pays up front at anything. They rent the division. They pay the first six months fees up front, which is about twenty five grand or something like that. But then they've got to achieve thirty franchises within two within three years. So and then after which they own it. So it's, it's a new model which is working really, really well. But we are really open to new business ideas. We just need the right people. And, and actually, a lot of it comes from in, internally too. We're starting up Jim's Beauty, for example, which is one of our current franchisors in laundry. Another franchisee looking at Jim's massage, like remedial massage type of thing. So these are all from, from existing people. Yeah. Um, laundry come from one of our cleaning franchisors. Bill Cobb and Ugly. Yeah. So, mm. a, lot of it, a lot of it comes up internally. Because once we, once we know somebody, once they're a good operator internally, we've got confidence in them, we know them, we know their customer service and their ability. So that's actually a common reason, a common source of new divisions. Right. Great. Stuff. Thanks. But if you, like, if they want to start one up, they can just email you and... Yeah, Jim at Jim's.net. Anybody got a new idea? It must be something we're not only really doing because we can't, we can't breach territory rights. So somebody says, I like to do Jim's landscaping. Well, you can't because landscaping is a, is a territory right of a mowing franchisee. For sure. Good question. If you have more questions, guys, please feel free to jump up as well. One here online from Felix, he says, I'm interested in buying Jim's mowing franchise for over a year, but can I still buy a franchise with bad credit history? So he obviously needs finance, got bad credit. Are there yeah. any options available for him? Well, it wouldn't worry us, but you'd have to get the money. That's the only problem. <laughs> That's a bit difficult. Yeah, it would be. We do have, it depends. If you've got some money, we can often do things like vendor terms. Particularly in areas where we've got masses of work, which is not that uncommon in mowing. So if you're going to an area where there's lots of work, there's going to be no problems with pay for work guarantee, no extra advertising, we can often say, look, get enough money to pay for you know, your basic your equipment and start up and stuff and we'll vend you the rest. That quite often happens. Well, one quick line online from Colin Harvest has gone, in a country town, can a franchise or sign up franchisees without consultation or approval of existing franchisees? Yes. Yes, they do. But, but, but um, I put it this way, technically yes, but franchisors tend to be very aware of franchisee opinion in our system because if you get a bad rating on your reviews, you look very, very bad according to the system. And franchisees can also, they can move to a different franchise or they can vote you out. So technically yes, in practice, franchisors are very beholden to franchisee opinion. That, that's the reality of it, because the way the contracts are drawn, drawn up. For sure, we've got one more from Robbie online. It's gone, due to medical reasons, I can't do too much physical labor at the moment. Can I still buy a franchise and employ staff immediately, or do I have to work in the business straight away? No, you don't have to, but you, you, you have to understand the business very well from, from the base, you, mm. which means you need some kind of a background in the industry or in business in general, or have something that shows that you can do it. Because employing staff is quite challenging, hard to find the right person, the right people, and then control them. If you don't know the industry, it's very difficult to do it. Because how can you teach somebody to clean if you mm -hmm. don't know how to clean yourself? For sure. Mm -hmm. I've got some more on the list here as well, but guys, if you want to come up and ask, please feel free Mind to do you, so. Mind you, there are divisions that don't require a lot of manual work, like laundry is one example. Laundry would be a good one, yeah. One of the things we're looking at too, we'd love to do is, is vending machines, which we've been talking to some people about. That would be a fantastic one for somebody who doesn't have the physical mm. stamina to do something like mowing or fencing. But if you can work in it initially and actually learn how to do it properly and then systemise like Orlando and other guys have done. A lot of franchisees don't work in the field at all. By the time that Dan Carl finished his mowing, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't actually in the field at all. He had workers, he had three teams working, that's how he did it. So you can progress towards that, but you have to understand the business yourself in the beginning.
Sure. Got one more on the list here I've just come across. Um, is it from, is Gherkin here from cleaning? Gherkin? No, his question is, are you adopting any more kids? So I don't think you've adopted any kids, but are you having more kids? <laughs> I'd love to have more kids. I miss them enormously. I had, pre, uh, I had kids for 36 years, and my youngest has turned 14. He's a wonderful teenager, but a teenager is not a kid. If I could have a kid every two years forever, that would be my perfect life. I love kids. <laughs> <laughs> You've got one here from, is Anna Marie and, and Niels from Pest Control, are they still here? No, they've basically asked, why not more information regarding pest control? So I don't know if that's in regards to training content maybe during the three days or it might be online, but yeah. Well, the training course of pest control is quite good actually. So you get all the information about that specifically. We try and make the generic course, we try and spread the examples as much as possible. So it's not too oriented to what, say, mowing or cleaning. That's hard though. The mowing guy's going to talk about mowing or the cleaning person will yeah. talk about cleaning. Well, I'm a mowing contractor myself, so it's natural for me. But I always try and talk about other divisions too that yeah. I'm familiar with. But uh, look, we've got 40-something divisions. It's hard to, hard to talk about all of them. Sure. Come up. Ask a question. Sure. Now you've, <coughs> since I've been here, <coughs> sorry, apologies. You made a couple of comments about how you know, um, younger people are and are less likely to succeed in, in business. I just want to ask, what's, what's a common trait that you, that you see in, in younger people, such, such as myself, that, are, that would, would lead to a lower rate of success? I wouldn't say younger people, but younger people who are single, don't, they're not married, they've got no mortgages, they've got no children, tend to be more um, emotionally unstable, put it that way. Okay. Because, because in, in the worst case, the fated one is when they haven't put any money in it from their parents. That's the absolute no-no. But it's, it's more to do with the emotional thing. Look, I was, I was hopeless in business before I got married. I really was. I messed up. The reason I was in debt was not because of student. It was just because of stupid, stupid things in business and just being lazy. As soon as I got married, I just had to work because I had to support my wife and then I had to support kids. and I just, I just had to. So... We've had some young single guys being extremely successful and have gone brilliantly. Jason Jap, who runs um, Scratch and Dent. He's the divisional Scratch and Dent. He's an amazing guy. He was one of my first franchisees. He was a very successful franchisor. Um, great guy. Now, he actually was only about 21 when he joined us. He was a young single guy, but very, very impressive. Actually, okay. he was so impressive that I actually I vended him into the business. Okay, what, what, what are the, some of the traits you see in younger people that look like, such as um, the person you just mentioned? What's the sort of traits that you see in those people that sort of well, the, make the good, them successful? Well, the good thing about he he progressed a long way in his career. He was actually, at the age of 21, he was like assistant manager at a supermarket. Mm -hmm. So he, he showed unusual steadiness. He just impressed me. He's just an impressive guy. He speaks well. He just, you can tell a lot about a person just from interviewing them. That makes sense. Very steady. He's obviously a sense of, of ambition and self-discipline. You, you, could, you could tell. It's not a blanket thing, really. It's just, we're just more cautious, that's all. It, it's yeah. more it, emotional stability is the biggest thing. I don't know. How old are you? I'm 25. I'm single dad, though. So, well, um, you, yeah. no, but that's, you're not, you wouldn't fit in that category at all. You're a dad. Yeah, yeah. You that's, that's what that's why I'm asking. You cannot just give up because you've got a child to look after, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, absolutely. I've got two beautiful young children. No, daughters. I'd say you'd actually be a... Two beautiful... Two children. Yes. I'd say you'd be a very, very low risk. <laughs> it's yeah, it's very... lack of responsibility as much as anything else that does it. Okay, that makes perfect sense. That's why I thought I should ask. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Well done, mate. It's good luck with it. We've got great people in their 20s. We've got great people in their 70s. It, it's, it's not... 80s even. Jeff? One guy is One guy's 80s. One yeah. guy is 80s, yeah. yeah. He just had his 80s birthday. But the guy who was on the National 9 News story was Connor. So Connor, I think, started with us when he was 23 or 22. And he's got like a business with like seven or eight people now, turning over really good revenue. So he's only 25. So it all depends, doesn't it? Yes. It all depends. Cool, guys. Have you got any more questions for Jim at all? No? All done? Awesome. Thank you for all your questions tonight. Um, hopefully, I didn't miss any. If I did, please ask Jim at the end as well. We do. It's a great time to get photos with Jim now because of the light as well. So if you want a photo of Jim, please. Hang around at the end. Now, Jim, what were the three questions or what were the ones that stood out to you the most that you want to give first pick on the prizes? I tell you what, there were so many good ones. I don't even know what to decide. You wrote a lot down. You wrote more than three. I love the one I talked about, the advice at the age of 21. Who said that? Advice yeah, at 21? Through. Yep, jump Nobody's up. Nobody's ever asked that before. You pick anything you like. I got Monopoly. Okay. It's all right. Now, I know you want him, I know you want him Monopoly, so just come see, come see me. You want him Monopoly, yeah? 
Somebody talked um, about you want a monopoly. Yeah. Come see me at the end. Yeah. We'll get you a monopoly. Yeah. We'll get you a monopoly. Thank you. That's right. Um, somebody talked about new ideas. Where do you get your ideas from? I thought that was a great one too. Who said that? Yeah. New that ideas you? for divisions? New ideas or just yeah. new ideas in general? Yeah, come up. Grab whatever you want. I was talking about... Can yeah. I take Jim? <laughs> you want to take Jim? Is that a prize? I oh, know, it's up to him. You think Ask him. <laughs> Which one? The laptop. The laptop? You can't take the laptop. You can't take the laptop. That's Charles, you have to ask him. Anything as well. Besides you got, Jim or the laptop. You've got a hat, you've got a yeah. book, you've got beer, you've got hat. cards, you've got stubby holders. You want Jim to sign it or anything? Or? I want Jim to sign it. Absolutely. He wore it, so it's got his DNA on it, so there you go. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Oh, you write, can you write to Joseph? Is there any way you can write? You really need a ballpoint pen. I've got a sharp in the office. I have to get it. Well, good questions. Thank you very much. And what was the one, other one there, Jim? Um, Jim, there's so many. There's so many great ones there. The um, I like the Star Wars question. That was pretty. Star Wars good. is very creative. Who asked um, about Star Wars? This gentleman over here from Boeing. Very creative. So pick anything you like. Grab anything you like. You can take a six pack for sure. <laughs> Rick the beat, go take that there for sure. Right. Well done. So guys, thank you very much for that and any, question. Anybody else who asked a question on the microphone, come up and grab your prize afterwards. Yeah, so we do this every three to four weeks. If you want to jump on, we've had franchisees jump in and say g'day. If they're happy or not, or sometimes they some jump in, so please make sure you jump on. Um, all the prizes here as well for people who ask the question, so please come see me at the end. If you want a photo with Jim now, give me your camera and I'll take it for you. It's great because with the light there, it's a good time to do it now. Wednesday, there's a massive rush, so please get it now. Looks a lot better too, but thank you very much for your attention as well. And we hope you enjoy the rest of our training week. So.